Looking back, I was just angry all the time. I had no patience. And, and I wasn't happy. Todd used to be abusive towards his partner, Kimberly. Yelling, um, shouting, but also the silent treatment, um, not realising that that was uh, what's called abuse. And intimidation was a, was a big one as well. I'm disgusted by them, the, that I was doing those behaviours. Oh, he was scary. I never knew if what I was going to say to him was going to make him angry. It got to the point where I'd come home and I was feeling like I was walking on eggshells. Todd and Kimberly say they've turned around their relationship after Todd sought help through a program designed to address abusive and violent behaviours five years ago. They're speaking publicly for the first time. For me, it was a life of fear. Not for myself physically, but the fact that I felt like I wasn't me. I was constantly afraid. I was constantly hiding. They say it never got physical but that the abuse showed itself in the smallest of things. Even something little like, I really wish you'd take the garbage bin out before it's too full. That would set him off. I said I was going to pull it, put it out, right? And that was just that, it, that was the last thing. And bang, I'd yell or shout and, and yeah, that, that'd be the argument for the night. So yelling at Kimberly, you saw that as normal? I saw that as uh, everyone gets everyone gets angry. Um, it was realizing how much and uh, how much I was yelling and, and how scared it made her. Kimberly gave me an ultimatum, said, "You need to get help, or I'm gone." I thought, "I love this lady. I don't want to lose her." Dave Nugent understands violence deeply. He knew he needed to change after a shocking outburst against a former partner when he was a young man more than 30 years ago. At a particular family event, I lost my cool and I ended up smashing the family car with a steel pipe that was triggered by an argument we had before the event and that was the turning point. Dave went on to become a trained men's counsellor, setting up his own program on the outskirts of Melbourne that's been running for 20 years. If you know you've got a short fuse, if you know that you're overreacting, or if you know that you struggle with jealousy about what she's doing or where she is, these are all red flags. So Jason, everything happens in this room here. Today, Dave's meeting up with some of his regular participants. Here we go, rock and roll. Joining in is a facilitator, Kathy, as well as Todd, who's kept up with the program. The other men on the call do not want to be identified. Oh, we got some good numbers. Thanks, everybody, for this um, turning up today. Programs like this one are designed to help men stop their abusive and violent behaviours. The men are asked to identify some examples. I definitely get an aggressive tone. Oh, yeah. like voice changes. Yep. Aggressive tone. Tone. Aggressive. Yep. Loud, is it? Yeah, loud and forceful. Then they have to think about the intent of their actions. I want her to shut up. That's it's real, isn't it? That's what's really going on here, yeah? So I got this angry look. I'm shutting down, but really, at the end of the day, I want to win this argument. I want her to shut up. What else is my motive here? Control, asserting dominance. Yeah. I want control, as someone said. What's the control about? Power. Power. You could also say, to show her, I am the man, and you listen to me. I'm the man. Crucially, they're asked to question the beliefs that drive these actions. 
I was a big believer in we're not equal, so you're not my equal, I'm superior. The first step for men to make change is that they have to acknowledge they need to change. But to get to that point, they've got to acknowledge that their behaviour is abuse. The good news though, is that we can rewrite these. We don't have to live our life like these. If we look at the first one, what I want is more important compared to what she wants. Have a think about that and what would be a healthier belief or a positive belief. Yeah, I think the first one is all people are equal. Okay, and so we could put here, if we're talking about the relationship, that um, she is my equal. She's my equal, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Can you describe the moment that you knew you needed to change? The night I got kicked out of my house and got told not to come back home. Yeah, that was that was the biggest motivation, which opened my eyes, I suppose, to exactly I was being an aggressive prick. When my kids didn't want to come over for the weekend, one weekend, because the fortnight before, I um, you know, I lost my cool, and to me, my kids are my world. Men's programs around Australia usually run about 20 weeks, but Dave believes many men need much longer ongoing support. We've been practising a minimum of 40 weeks for the last 20 years, and 40 weeks sometimes isn't enough. Um, on average, we'll hold guys for two or three years. A genuine solid change doesn't happen over weeks. Service providers say studies show men's programs lead to a reduction in abusive and violent behaviours. But longitudinal research, that is, over years, is limited. They acknowledge that not all men will change, but those who are willing to should be encouraged. We can't arrest our way out of this problem. Men using violence need to be held accountable for their actions and they need to embark on change um, and we need to provide services that assist them do that in the safest and most effective way. We can't just keep providing money to pick up the pieces afterwards. One major service provider, Relationships Australia, says it has more than 200 men on its waiting lists in New South Wales alone, with some waiting for five months. Some women are actually waiting for him to get help. Their view is he needs help. They're, he says, I put my name down. We actually could be creating uh, a greater unsafety for women who are thinking, oh, well, he's doing his best. Um, and, um, and in fact, by the time he gets the call in five months that we've got a spot, who knows where that family's up to and what's happened to his motivation. Yeah. For Kimberly, Todd's willingness to confront his actions has made a huge difference to their relationship. It wasn't an overnight thing. It's not like you take a pill and you're all better. I realised that, yeah, my Todd was coming back and it was so worth the effort. They got married last year. I don't have any fear now. I don't have to worry that there are consequences because there aren't anymore. You might think you'll get teased, but... Ask for help. Go, go and ask for help. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's the best thing you can do. Just as he said, whoever you are, if you need help, you can call the National Domestic Family and Sexual Violence Counselling Helpline 1800 RESPECT on 1800 737 732.